Hey guys, welcome back to the Smitty and D Show. Of course, I am Tony D. And in the studio today, guys, I'm actually really, really excited. There's a fella here. Mm. We like to call him the Elder. He has a book called Wisdom from the Father You May Have Never Had. And of course, well, that didn't work. Hard lessons learn in love and relationships. Welcome to the studio, mm. David Gooden. Why, bah, thank, bah, bah, you, bah. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi. I don't think anybody's ever clapped for me before. <laughs> oh, sure they have. <laughs> okay. With your amazing life, of course okay. they have. Yeah. David, tell yes, us who you are. I know who you are. Okay. But tell us. How would you get into relationship therapy, counseling? Mm -hmm. And also, let's just dig into your life. Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Xenia, Ohio. Wow. Outside Dayton. Okay. Which is in the Wilberforce Central State area. What was that like? Uh, Well, I was there until I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. And then I moved up 27 miles outside of uh, Cleveland in Lorain County where I was raised. Gotcha. What made you come down here to the dirty south? Uh, you got that much time? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Well, kids, family, life. Um, no, it wasn't anything. It had to do. It had to do with life. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, I have a very incredible life, very incredible story. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in Ohio, where I was raised, um, I was always getting in trouble with girls. The first first two women I had sex with, both of them got pregnant. Uh oh. So I didn't start out right. What? Yeah, they did. Wow. They did. And um, it wasn't my, I tell my degree, my daughters, I said, it wasn't my fault. I said, they just knew I was easy. No, well, they took advantage of me. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but it was I their did. fault. Okay. Yeah, it was their fault. And then <laughs> I ended up getting into um, uh, managing a band. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a band that actually represented the state of Ohio at the Smithsonian Institute in D.C. Mm-hmm. when Ohio was the featured state and they represented uh, the state of Ohio for R&B. Mm-hmm. And then I was a concert promoter. I was doing uh, concerts with uh, people like um, uh, David Ruffin, the Ohio Players, the Barquets. Um, I had contracts on uh, Chaka Khan, Bootsy Collins, Frankie Beverly, and Mays. Mm. But when you do that, then all of a sudden the drugs come. Uh Uh-oh. Let's talk about it. What what sort of things did you see behind the scenes during that time that maybe Um, we don't know about? um, It was so easy to get addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. Back in that time, uh, people, uh, drugs was really getting, coming on the scene hard. And one of the things about my generation is that um, we didn't we didn't we didn't know just how bad that it was what we were doing mm. the drugs that we were doing because mm-hmm. we didn't have we didn't know just how bad drugs was getting ready to be because we didn't have a generation before us to show us what can happen we were getting ready to become that generation. Mm-hmm. And so um, drugs were just too accessible. And I got to the point that I had gotten, in, gotten into drugs. And uh, because when you're a concert promoter and you have the drugs, you can almost have anything you want. And you find yourself abusing a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, abusing a lot of women because you can have them like that. And um, then I got to the point to where I had become a drug addict. Oh. And um, I had a girlfriend, and I had a, a son that was two, three years old, and one that was one. And uh, things were coming down on me real hard. And if I had not left in the middle of the night, we actually left Ohio in the middle of the night, and we didn't tell anybody but our parents we were gone. Mm-hmm. And we ended up. Um, this is in 1982. We ended up in at ended up in Atlanta in College Park on Godby Road. Wow. And um, and then at that time, I had developed a Two thousand dollar week cocaine habit, and where I used to in eighty two. Yeah, well, people made thousands of dollars a week in eighty two. What they did? Oh, they did. But what happens is that you you always when you have the weight like that, Mm -hmm. nine times out of ten you become your biggest customer because you can have it like that. So it ends up biting biting you, Mm -hmm. you know, in the back. Question: Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about how people were abusing drugs back then. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Cosby got he, he got in a little bit of trouble, but I also saw a documentary about the Playboy Mansion and mm-hmm. how everyone 
was kind of doing drugs and doing mm -hmm. quaaludes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was kind of common practice? And mm. if so, why is Bill Cosby the only one that's in trouble? Well, it was back then because, um, like, when I was coming up, you know, you actually had doctors that could give you an excuse mm -hmm. uh, to be off work. You know, you had doctors where um, you had people that uh, would give you prescriptions, you know, for uppers and downers, mm. you know. And um, it was something, in, and especially Lorraine County, where I'm from, during that time, mm -hmm. the, you had people come from all over the country getting drugs because you could get anything that you wanted wow. at that time. But wow. it took a tremendous toll, you know, on the people that were doing it. What about celebrities? You were providing them with, I'm assuming. Um, some. Some. You know, a couple when you would. Um, Shaka? Have you ever done, uh, have you ever supplied Shaka? No. Okay, good. No. Great. I didn't get, Great I didn't get answer. a chance to meet, I didn't get a chance to meet her. I mm -hmm. actually had, I actually had her for two days. Mm -hmm. I had her uh, for one day in my hometown, mm -hmm. and I had her the other day for a DJ in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, Shaka gets a bad rap for drug use. Yeah, well, uh, it wasn't at that time mm -hmm. uh, because of where I was at. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know why I changed having her at my hometown and mm -hmm. asked the DJ in Columbus if he could take her for both days. Yeah. But now, since hindsight is twenty twenty, I knew that it probably, because uh, she might have been 20 years old or something mm -hmm. like so that. So she's pretty young. Yeah, but I had all the drugs, mm -hmm. you know. And so that would not have been, and plus I was pretty, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I just wasn't right. I could talk people into thinking how I want them to think, mm -hmm. and but let them think they thought of it, mm. you know. Because you when you're hustling manipulate. like that, you can do that. You're Donald Trump? You were Donald uh, Trump back then? No, he's... He's like the master of that. Oh, he's a really master. Yeah, he's the master. He's the master of the yeah, master. I can't, I can't touch okay. that. Okay, got I it. Can't. But, got it. But it turns out I'm, I'm glad um, uh, that I didn't because it wouldn't have been good. Because when you're the one that's having them, having them mm -hmm. and you got the drugs and you're the one that's um, meeting them and talking to them, you know, up front, mm -hmm. you know, back in the uh, green room where you have them, then you have a lot of access to say stuff. And, and I'm glad it didn't because she's a, oh, God, tremendous when yeah, she's we overcome love her. now. Talking about celebrities and drugs and, and so on and so forth, can you talk to or help us understand what goes through a celebrity's mind once they have access to everything? Puff Daddy recently was in the mm -hmm. news. Will Smith was in the news. Mm -hmm. They're in the news for doing some of the most grotesque things. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Re famous reality, not reality, but famous folks, are they happy? I mean, are they searching for a new high? What's going on with them? You know what? When you ride, and when you really ar arrive to a level of success like that, and maybe not even to that degree in the entertainment industry, no matter what it is, it is very important the people that surround you and who's talking to you and who's in your ear. You have to have people that will tell you the truth about you. Mm. Because in one of the books there, uh, one of the things that I say is that don't, don't ever uh, uh, subject yourself to your own wisdom because you'll never tell yourself the, the, the truth about you. Ooh. You won't do it. You have to have people around you that will jack you up and be able to say no, not be intimidated by you. Because most people uh, that are, you know, wealthy, rich, they can have anything that they want, however they want to have it. You know, they don't have people that someone in their ear mm -hmm. to just challenge them mm -hmm. and say, look, this flat out is not right. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, just should not, that's not what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be caring uh, uh, more about other people. And, and it helps, you know, if um, you've had an experience with the Lord at some point in your life like mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Because that's where my whole world turned. You notice how everyone, once they go through all of that, they go back to the church, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mace, he's, mm -hmm. he's back. What's happening, though? What's happening with that? Why are they going from one extreme to another? Hmm. Um, one of the things that happens is that um, you, anyone that's, anyone that's jacked up, you got a bad attitude, you're just a bad person and all that kind of stuff. You know it. 
Mm. You know it before anybody tells you. It's not like it's a mystery to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you do. You know, so, um, but sometimes what you do, a lot of people, like I did, like if there is a God, you know, if there is a God. I've I've had a couple experiences. Like I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. I didn't even drive by churches (laughs) at all. You know, I had a young lady one time I was riding in my convertible because I always had convertibles. And she was on the, walking down the street, and she said, David, said, get away from me. Mm. You know, you ain't nothing but the devil. Mm. And I said, you're right. I am the devil. I am the D-I-B-L-E. <laughs> okay? I am. Because you just don't, don't know no better. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, uh, one of the uh, posts that you, uh, that you may have seen, it was like at one point I got to a point where I had a family of four. I didn't have a job. I was doing drugs, but I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. We didn't have any food, and I didn't have a car. Wow. And she said, you know what? If you could just go to the store and get a can of beans, I said, you know, I could make up something. So I walked up to the Kroger's, and I went and got a can of beans. Then when I got to the cash register, I was a penny short. A penny mm-hmm. short? I was a penny short. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm walking home, because I'm just probably one of the lowest, at that time, one of the lowest points of my life, I was thinking about, because I'm hustling, I was thinking about who am I going to rob? Whose house am I going to break in? To get something that I can sell, because, I mean, you want to do what you got to do to, you know, do what you got to do with your family. And then all of a sudden I had another thought. And I said, you know what, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to go get a job. Mm. And so I got, got to the apartment, and I told her, I said, I'm going to get up and go to get a job. She said, how are you going to get there? I said, I'm going to walk. Mm. So I got up in the morning, made myself presentable, and I started walking. And I walked about maybe two and a half miles, and I saw a sign that said salesman wanted. Mm-hmm. I went in there, and uh, the manager liked me, and um, it was Orkin killing them roaches oh, and Lord. them bugs, okay? <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, David, I, he said, I really like you, and I really think you can do this. And this was a job. Uh, that it was a paid job with commission. Mm. And he said, well, David, do you have a car? I said, yes, sir. I said, I got a car. And he said, okay. He said, I'll see you here in the morning at 8 o'clock. And I said, sir, I'll be there. When I walked out that door, I felt like I was about 15 feet tall Mm. because I got a job. And then I went, walked back to the apartment. I reached in the mailbox, checked the mailbox, and there was some food stamps in there. And I said, oh, wow. So back then you can go to the candy lady, Mm -hmm. you know, and trade you some and get you a few dollars. Mm -hmm. All right. So I said, okay. So I did that. And then I had this friend that was in the apartment about a couple doors down. His name was Big John. He weighed about 350 pounds. He had a Cadillac and he had a little Chevy Vega. Mm -hmm. And so he'd always let me use his car. So Mm -hmm. I went over and I said, John, can I use your car to run up to the door? He said, sure, David. And he put the keys, he put the keys out to me. Then he took them back. Mm-hmm. And then he started taking the key, a key off the ring. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know what? It takes me 15 minutes to get in and out that little blankety blank. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll sell it to you for $250. And you can pay me whatever you want to pay me by month until you get me paid. Wow. And I said, wow. So when I walked out the door, tears shot out my eyes. Mm. And I said, there must be a God. Because now I got a job. I got a car. Mm-hmm. I got food. You know, and uh, uh, I got money Mm -hmm. when 24 hours earlier, I was a penny short for a can of beans, all because I decided to walk instead of do something crazy. Wow. Look how you're rewarded. Yeah. Wow. That was good. In the 80s, there was a a whole generation of black youth that didn't have fathers. Mm -hmm. Were you? Do you remember that time? Oh, yeah. What was was going on during that? Why didn't, why weren't there a whole Mm -hmm. lot of fathers in the homes? Well, one thing, so much, so much was going on with drugs. So it was mainly drugs. Yeah, so much was going on with drugs at the time that uh, it really rocked uh, the black community. And I was one of those guys, and I was one of the problems, mm. you know, because um, here I ended up having uh, uh, six kids by four different women. And um, I saw times where, you know, I just left them, you know, just left. And I would always leave them and just move directly in with another woman Mm. and it was uh and left the kids not knowing the devastation that it was getting ready to have on my children Mm. and how my children one day were going to tell me about it when they were grown Mm -hmm. 
about how they feel or felt about me being there for them and how I was there, you know, to help raise them, how I wasn't there. And uh, so I know I, how I contributed uh, to that. And um, my life really didn't turn around until I actually met my wife. And when I met my wife, uh, maybe about a year after I got to uh, Atlanta and, and uh, me and my girlfriend ended up breaking up. And um, when I met her, she told me, she said, if, if we're going to date, she said, David, she said, you're going to have to go to church. And I told her, I don't do church. Mm. I said, I don't even drive by church. Mm. But she was wearing a pair of Daisy Dukes. Well, there you go. Okay. With some knockout legs. <laughs> and I told my daughters, I said, Beyonce didn't have nothing on your mama. <laughs> so I think what happened is that when I told her I would go to church, I was looking down mm -hmm. at those Daisy Dukes. <laughs> and I figured that maybe I could go a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, so she kind of uh, got me going to church. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I just went. I saw her put $50 in an offering plate. And I thought she lost her mind. I said, this woman don't even know what to do with her money. This is why she need me. Okay. Now, I'm living with her, driving her car, okay, eating her food. And I'm telling her she don't know what to do with her money. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that's where it kind of, that, that's where it started. And the night I actually gave, uh, uh, no, that wasn't it. No. I almost got busted on a drug deal. Ooh. And um, everything was set up to get me because the girl I was uh, dealing with, she was already busted on a secret indictment. That means the feds already had her. Mm. So this was supposed to be my night. But this is also at a time where I got a $2,000 a week cocaine habit. Mm -hmm. But my girlfriend, which now is my wife, was so naive, she had no idea that I was like that. My mm -hmm. respiratory system was breaking down. My nose run 24-7 if I didn't snort mm -hmm. cocaine. And there was this deal that was going down, and the only person they wanted was me. Mm. But, the head, but the narcotic agent that night, his wire didn't work, so he didn't see the deal go. Mm. And, but, and they were having a party up there, and then all of a sudden all these college park policemen come from everywhere and got paddy wagons, and I was the last one with my hands up against the wall. And this college park policeman said, hey, can this guy take his hands down? And uh, he said, yeah. And he told me, he said, David, he said, I know you're the one that gave them to him. He said, I know what you're doing, where you're going, what you're doing. He said, I hope I never see your face again. And I told him, I said, man, you'll never see me again in your life. Mm. And they shut the door. I called a cab home. And in the back seat up under a cab, I ain't gave my life to the Lord or nothing. But in the back seat of a cab, up under my breath, I told God. And this is what I'm snorting $2,000 a week in cocaine. And everything is just breaking down in my body. And I said, God, I get the message. I said, I'm either getting killed or I'm going to jail. I said, my kids are going to wake up and find out their dad's a drug addict and a drug dealer, and it's going to kill my mom. I said, I'll make, I said, I'll make you a promise. I said, I'll never do another drug or sell another drug in my life. That's all I said. Mm -hmm. When I woke up that next morning, I didn't have a runny nose. I didn't have any breathing problems. I didn't have any evidence in my body that I'd ever did drugs before in my life. Mm. It was just gone. Just gone. And that was 37 years ago. Yay. Yeah. So he kind of got my attention a little bit. Just a little bit. But I still had a hard head. Uh-oh. But I didn't do any more drugs. Okay. okay. I hear you. Let's talk about what's going on now in mm -hmm. our culture. You're an elder, right? I am. There's a disconnect between men and women, mm -hmm. black men and women. Mm -hmm. My perspective is... Someone shook, shook the box, and now we're fighting each other, but mm -hmm. we need to be focusing on who shook the box. Mm -hmm. What's your take, and how do we fix this? One of the things about, one of the things that I tell, I share with the uh, single ladies, I share with them that when you see a man that you're interested in, observe him from a distance for about six months without him even knowing that you're interested. See how he interacts with people. See how he handles arguments and disagreements. See if he honors his family, his parents, or just what he does. You know, see what he does with his money. See if he's responsible. Just check him out from a distance without him even knowing that you're interested. And what happens is that he'll show you some things right in front of your eyes. You'll hear him say some things in your ears. Because most people that get in relationships that, that, end up falling apart mm -hmm. or it's not like what they thought 
it's because they didn't pay attention to what they heard and what they saw mm -hmm. all the time right in front of their eyes. Mm. You got some advice for men? Oh, yeah. Give it to us. Um, we have to take responsibility that um, I think I'm the worst, I was the worst of them all with some of the things that I did, some of the people that I, that I hurt with no conscience of what I was doing, you know? And, um, but when I learned better, then I did better, mm. which is why I have the relationships with all my children that I have now is because I saw, but I didn't, I didn't learn better until I saw an example. Who was your example? It was a, a pastor friend of ours, mm. him and his wife mm -hmm. and his parents. Mm. When I saw how they interacted, because the way I came up, especially with my mom, when my mom said, you know, sit on the sofa, you know, while we have company, even if you sit there for two hours, mm -hmm. if she told you a second time, that was God giving you grace because she didn't, she didn't do, do it like that. So same. I was the same way, I was a dis disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And what happens uh, a, lo a lot of time with us men is that it's hard to be what we didn't see. And so what happens is, I, I, tell, uh, I tell ladies, even about, about us men, one of the first, and this is one of the first questions that I ask men, did you grow up with both your parents? I do that all the time. Yeah. And if you did, and most of them say my dad wasn't there, mm -hmm. but if you did, then I ask them what kind of relationship did they have? Because what happens with women, that if you don't get into that, because even in counseling, what we say when we're sitting down there with a couple, we don't have to meet the parents because we know we're looking at them. Because okay. you know what you get from your mom, you know what you get from your dad, okay? But what happens with a lot of ladies, because you don't ask the right questions, they expect some things to common sensely be in a man mm -hmm. that was never modeled before him or imparted into him to even be in him to share with someone. Mm. And when most men find out uh, that they don't have these qualities, a lot of times they rebel. They get mad. They don't say, well, you know what, maybe I need to, you know, find me a mentor, maybe I need to start studying on some stuff, mm -hmm. reading some things on relationships. What can I do to get better? That's all we have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we know we jacked up. Mm. You know, we know that, that we wasn't there for our children. We know we didn't do that woman right or that woman right. You know, we know that. It just takes common sense. I always say the highest level of intelligence is common sense. Mm. Nothing's that really that complicated. You know, all we gotta do is just get in a different environment uh, because you can never rise above the level of company that you keep. Mm. If you ever want to know where you're headed, all you have to do is look at the people around you because you can't rise above the level of company that you keep on a regular basis. Wow. And if you really look, a lot of times you look at it, you're all making about the same kind of money. You all have some of the kind of same ideas. And then if you try to pull yourself out of there, in a lot of cases, uh, of course, you got to really have strength to do that. You know, then there's some circles where they feel like, who do you think you are? You think you're better than us? Because you're trying to do, you got some bigger ideas, you got some greater things that you want to do. But we just have to educate ourselves more and first admit to ourselves that there's a lot of areas that we need help in. The older I get, the more I learn that I don't know. Mm. because I'm, I'm always observing. You know, I'm learning. I was learning from you just sitting over there. <laughs> what did you learn? I'm crazy? <laughs> no, <laughs> that you have this uh, uh, demeanor while you're interviewing. You know, it's like there's no question that you don't know what, you, what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and you're just so relaxed and confident in it. <laughs> You know, that you're just so easy. I thought you were going to say something about my dad. <laughs> He's funny. Dad. You guys, uh, they were actually talking at the first part of the show, and mm -hmm. they were reminiscing and bonding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's cool, dude. Yeah, he is. Not this cool. Not your, not your type of cool? No, not as cool oh, as you no, are? No, 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 no. No, he'd be, he'd be a good wannabe. Oh! Okay. Smitty, you heard that? Yeah. Shots fired. Oh, yeah. Shots fired. Yeah. 
So relationships are tough. We're in an age right now where people are blaming each other. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of the stuff they're saying about one another? I.e. women are masculine, Mm -hmm. men are feminine. What's your Mm -hmm. take on what's happening in relationships right now? Um, You know what, I think that is, um, one of the things about you women is I don't know where we would be without you. Mm -hmm. Is because you have the ability to adapt to no matter how stressful, no matter what the situation is, to pull yourselves out of it, especially if you have children. Mm. Now, the children that I have always say that, and they're doing phenomenal now, I always say that the reason they're doing so good is not because of me, but in spite of me. Mm. Because I can't take that credit from their mom, and they know, you know, who, who did it. You know, so it's, um, no, women can can do that. But here, here's what we have to understand, both men and women, especially if you have children, especially if you have children together, is that the most important thing that you want to look at is that you have to fix some stuff and pay attention to the atmosphere and the environment that your children are coming up in. Mm -hmm. because too many times we are letting, we as parents are letting our children out of the house as damaged goods. Because, see, our children are not going to find out what they learned from their parents or Mm -hmm. what they didn't learn Mm -hmm. until they get in a long-term relationship or they get married, and then they are exposed for what they know Mm. or what they don't know. Mm -hmm. I heard... um, That's very true. I heard a gentleman... A uh, pastor was preaching, and he said, some of your children get ready to turn 18. Mm-hmm. And you're going to ask your kids, say, son, daughter, you get ready to turn 18, you get ready to be grown, what you going to do with your life? And he said, some of them, not all, they need to turn around and they look at you and say, mom, dad, I'm going to do exactly what you prepared me for. Nothing. <laughs> you taught me how to get an education. You taught me how to uh, be responsible and get a job, but you didn't teach me about life. I didn't see you and mom model a healthy relationship in front of me. I didn't see you pinching mom on the butt, her pinching you on your butt. I didn't see y'all resolving conflict without somebody getting upset and not talking for three days or throwing something on the floor. You never sat me on your lap and told me how much you loved me and how proud you were of me and the things that I was doing. You didn't prepare me for uh, uh, on how to love someone or how to treat somebody in return that loves me. So I'm going to do exactly what you prepared me for. Nothing. Mm. Because, see, with our children... No matter how we raise them, no matter what education they got, no matter what uh, uh, kind of job they got, the most important thing that's going to be to them in their life, do I have somebody in my life that cares for me and that I care for them? And we don't take advantage of it, but we treasure it. Mm. Do you believe in divorce? I do. Like, you know, you hear people quote the Bible and they say, um, God hates divorce. Mm-hmm. Well, God hates divorce, but he loves divorced people. Explain. Um, number one, there's nothing that God can't forgive us for. But he, de- lo- he loves divorced people um, because, however, if somebody said, well, you just sinned because you just got a divorce and that's not what the Word said. Well, uh, now that we're in, in grace and after Jesus had got here, we know that we can be forgiven for anything. But we, me and my wife, Cynthia, we have seen many marriages second marriages just flourish Mm -hmm. sometimes for some couples the worst thing that they can do is keep staying together keeping their children in a a toxic environment you know and in reality what you're doing you're really kind of you might be messing up two people's lives because maybe that may be the best thing for you to do is to maybe we just need to go our our separate ways Mm -hmm rather than just stay here in this toxic environment. Mm -hmm. And who knows, we've seen people do that, like I just said, um, that have met some incredible people and have turned into some incredible husbands, wives, partners, and parents. And also, and the children have done done well. They've really done well. You know how you've heard this this cliche where you hear guys say, 
um, I don't want to marry a woman with kids. I've heard it. Yeah. Or you hear her say, I don't want to marry a man with kids. Mm-hmm. You know what? Um, I wonder why you feel that way. You probably f- a lot of them feel that way because of what they went through okay. with sing- as single parents, oh. with a single parent. And some of the things that they had to go, some of the things that they lacked, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But if they really looked at it right, and if you go into a situation like that right, you actually could right two wrongs. Because what you could do is that you could, um, because you got some children over here that love that that not with their parents. You got some children over here that's not with their parents. And what could end up happening if you guys come together and you got to watch how you come together like that because, you know, blended families is the new norm for family. Yeah, it is. All right. Yeah. Anybody, 90, 75% of marriages now, somebody's going into the relationship with a child mm-hmm. or already has one. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to know how to first uh, get in there. But uh, sometimes God can love those children so much where the two of you are coming together that he gave gave them you. So you can actually... Fix, if you learn from your mistakes, you learn from her mistakes, you actually could fix two things Mm -hmm. if you just had the right mindset because one of the things you have to remember, while you say you don't want to marry a woman, you don't want want to marry a woman with kids, is that if you grew up in a a single family household, at one time some man was looking at your mother like that because you were that kid. Okay. I'm here for it. What do you know for sure? Mm, I know that the best days of your life are ahead of you. Are always ahead of you. I hear that. And never behind you. Because we don't serve a God that can't do more for us in our future than what he's done in our past. Mm. Yeah. So as bad as my past has been, as many people as as I have hurt, I am an advocate for single single moms. You know, uh especially to as many as I wrecked. You know, okay, but uh, but I am. At least you're honest. Yeah. Well, I am. Do you think men can be honest? Like, do you think that might be the disconnect? You, your, your generation is honest about Mm -hmm. the destruction that you guys cause. Mm -hmm. But my generation, are they just as honest? Um, you know, we created you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, we're responsible. You know, for for a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that my generation, we've been given the opportunity because hindsight is twenty twenty, mm-hmm. that we can look back and we can see that, you know, that's not right. That's not right. You know, that's not. I told one of my daughters, she's um, um, she's 40 now. And I think she might have been 35 then. And I was trying to advise her on something. Mm-hmm. Had, a, had to do with relationships. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, where you are in your life at 40 years old, I said, with what you know and what you've learned, I said, it's like being on a a 25 stories up and you overlook Atlanta. And if you're up 25 stories, you know, you can really see a lot. Mm -hmm. I said, but your dad, he's up here at about 110. (laughs) So he can see when you're headed this way, Mm -hmm. I see really where this is taking you. Mm. So when I'm advising you on something, you know, I'm telling you from, number one, I'm concerned about you Mm -hmm. more so than anybody you'll ever run across, Mm -hmm. you know. But I have seen enough to know that, baby, this is going to take you this way. Mm -hmm. This is going to take you that way, Mm. you know. So and um, I think so that's what's happened to our generation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've kind of got up here. We can look back and see, and we see all the stuff that we did, and we try to save our children from it. Mm -hmm. But if their children are like my children, my children want to be, they don't want me telling them so much now. They don't. They want me asking them. Yeah. Because I used to tell them everything to do. So when I try to tell them something, they said, did you ask me? Mm. They still do that today. Mm. Okay. David, are you ready? Yeah. He doesn't know what's up next, guys. This is his first time. He hasn't seen the full show. Four random questions. Ba, 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 ba. You might want to drink some water, sir. It's about to get real. <clears throat> <It's> okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
to our elder David. Mm -hmm. What trend? Oh, let me give you the rules. Fast, easy, direct answers. If you have a story, we're here for it. Mm -hmm. But very quick, straight to the point. And mm -hmm. these are very random. Mm -hmm. You ready? Mm -hmm. I asked everyone this question. What trend do you want to see go away? The trend of, I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. When I hear people say that, I say, you know what? Every time you say that, you're just proving that you really don't know what you're talking about. Mm. And what I mean by that is a lot of people begin to say that when they're in their 40s. But then you're going to have to explain that to your 60-year-old self on why you didn't feel that you needed one. Because no one wants to go through the last years of their life alone. No one does. You know, so uh, when I hear people saying that, I just, uh, because see, as you get older, even even as a couple, mm -hmm. um, at one point, you're going to need somebody. Mm -hmm. If you just keep aging one year after year, and I see so many people, especially with me and my wife and some of the things that we do, we see people that are in their 60s and 70s and alone. Don't have anybody to go to the store for them. Oh, wow. You know, can't get out to bed. Mm. You know, barely can get in the car. All you got to do is when you go to a grocery store, Look at how some people walk in the store because they don't have anybody else to do it. But I don't want to, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. That's mm -hmm. fine when you're in your 40s and up until you get your 50s. But you're going to have to explain it to your 65-year-old self one day. Got it. What lesson have you not learned yet or that you have to keep repeating? Um, I think I want to be like my wife. How so? <laughs> my wife is, she is the hardest working. Uh, she's the most intelligent person I've ever met in my life that doesn't know how intelligent that mm. they are. Okay. Plus, she has a work ethic that I can't touch. Wow. So I told her, I said, you know what? I'd like to start a business and put you uh, in charge of it and let you run it. And I'm going down to the beach in Daytona Beach. <laughs> Because I know you are going to do it. Procrastination mm -hmm. is, uh, is probably one of my uh, uh, biggest things. Because sometimes when you can do a lot of things, mm -hmm. you don't tend to focus on one thing mm -hmm. long enough. And you find yourself vaguely doing a lot of things, but really not going where it could if you would focus. I think uh, f focus, just focus because uh, time is um, uh, we, we just take it so for granted. Somebody said you have to live every day as if it's the last day in life mm. because one day you'll be right. What hill would you die on? What hill would I die on? I would um, help in somebody else. Okay, that's a good answer. Very, mm -hmm. very good answer. Yeah. Um, who's taught you the most other than your wife? Mm-hmm that you can remember? Um, I would say my pastors. Your pastors? I've had two incredible pastors. I had this one pastor I met when he was 24 years old. Mm -hmm. I was 37. I was just coming out of drugs. Um, I didn't know anything about the Bible. And um, I didn't know what Genesis was, <laughs> how to spell it, nothing. And uh, I learned from this guy, and he taught me how to know it for myself, mm -hmm. and uh, took me the way, way that I was. And I was there. I think he only had about 20, maybe about 20 members when we got there. And uh, I went from there and what I learned, and then I met another pastor who turned out to be my nephew. Uh, and um, we went to Jacksonville to start a church that 13 years we were there, grew to almost 4,000. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it took me from the drugs and all that to nowadays counseling professional athletes, five-fold ministry gifts, mentored over 300 men. Whoa. And I have to give uh, them credit, you know, for that. Uh, and But that 24-year-old preacher was Creflo Dollar. Really? Taffy is actually going to be on the show pretty soon. So oh, I'm actually. She is. Anybody that doesn't like Pastor Taffy, you're not even a human being. Oh, wow. I've known Taffy mm -hmm. maybe 10 years now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's 
she's uh she's pretty she's pretty cool. Yeah, we we is. enjoy each other's company. Yeah, she is. Now now I'm gonna tell you something. I told Pastor Taffy at a uh, at an event here mm-hmm. uh, a few months ago. I told her, you know how she does this gender role things, mm-hmm. you know, with the women mm-hmm. equality and all this and everything. Mm-hmm. I told her, I said, Pastor Taffy, I said, I you want to kind of put some balance to this now. <laughs> and she said, What are you talking about? I said, <laughs> I said, um, I said, we have to understand that in this generation, mm-hmm. men are no longer the majority in households anymore. It's the women that are the majority of households now. They are the majority, you know, of the households, all right? So, but we keep uh, preaching to men, you know, and getting on men that if they would just get their act together, then the wives and the kids, everything comes together, all right? They're not the majority anymore. You know, it's women, all right? And some women have, uh, but we don't talk to them and uh, about it, but some women, and Cynthia and I have run across this in counseling for the last 20 years, is that some of them are um, uh, very, very sharp, you know, very uh, 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 controlling, very, um, some of them have to be in, in certain, certain instances. You know, but you have a lot of strong women that just got to have have some some balance in there somewhere because of the of the role mm-hmm. that they that they play. Now we get down on the men, you know, and when they come, they come to conventions and they listen to what men ought to do. But then you got a man that's sitting there, knowing that you know what, that ain't what I do in my household, and we can tell in counseling in ten minutes who actually runs the house. Mm. Okay. Not just who, who mostly runs the house. Is it the women? Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You can yeah. T- you can tell. You can tell. I, I don't understand that because everybody talks about alpha women, alpha men, and all of mm-hmm. this. I want an alpha man, but do you want an alpha man at home too? I mean, because who's 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 mm-hmm. picking out the furniture? No. no who's picking want, out the curtains? No. What you want? What here's what you want in parents. It's the kind of man that you want. You want. I told a lady. I said. Um, uh, I said. Would you look? I said. We have too many women that are waiting to be chosen Ooh. when they should be choosing. Ooh. Because us men, we just ain't that smart sometimes. Can you say that again to that camera right, right there? Uh, yeah, I said we have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I said we have too many women that are waiting to be chosen mm-hmm. when they should be choosing. Mm. Because uh, us men, we j- we're, we're slow on some things. Yeah. And so, and I've shared this here with uh, uh, with quite a few ladies. I said, what you looking for? I said, you're looking for the guy. I, I said, when you hear ladies talk about a guy and point to a guy, mm-hmm. and they say, you know what? He's going to make somebody a good boyfriend. He's going to make somebody a good husband, a good father one day. But he ain't my type. Mm. I said, what you do, don't let her know that you paid attention to him. Be, but what you do is you mark that man because she just qualified him as being a good man. And then watch her go get two jerks in a row because she didn't recognize a good one when she saw one. Mm -hmm. Because I told her, I said, now you can be attracted to what's on on the outside, but you're gonna live with what's on the inside Mm -hmm. of a person. Mm -hmm. So I said, when you see that person, I said, you just kind of mark them. And I said, and what you do, you just kind of accidentally bump into it I said, hey, where are you from? Where are you from? And keep talking to him. Mm-hmm. You know, and I said, eventually what'll happen, he'll start getting nervous because he'll say, Oh my God, this is a nice lady. He said, she just keeps talking to me. You know, talking to me. And I said, the reason he's feeling like that is because he never would have thought that a woman like you would ever be interested in a man wow. like him. So he will know that he is the lucky one. Mm-hmm. Not that because you got me, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like God's gift to you. And you ought to know that. This one here. You just got to, got to. Women are are wise, and and women, we have a lot of intelligent women, but very few wise women. A wise woman can get a can get a man to do whatever she want him to do, but make him think he thought of it. That part. It's how you do it. That part. One example. I remember seeing this pastor that had come to church one time. He preached a message. It was called. Uh, I don't want Delilah. I love you. And he told the ladies, he said, ladies, he said, let me show you how to just use your head. He said, y'all just, you know, just that. And he said, say you're sitting in the room, 
you know, and your man getting ready to get up and he gets up and he's getting ready to go into another room mm-hmm. and he grabs the door handle, get ready to open the door and you stop him. You say, hey, stop, hold it. Don't move. You know, and he's startled. He's saying, what, what, what is it? She said, it's just something about how you grabbed that donut. now. It just did something to me. And he going to say, oh, you want to see me do it with the other <laughs> hand? Okay. That's all y'all got to do with us. Okay. We'll give you all our money. We'll do everything if you can just, because see, you can't buy men things. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is edify him. Mm-hmm. Tell him that he did something good because, especially with men nowadays coming from some of the households they come from, mm-hmm. you might be the first person that's ever made him feel like he is something. Mm. I love it. Last question. Mm-hmm. Is it the end? You're up there with God if you believe with God. I mean, believe God. What do you hope God, what do you hope he says to you or her? Mm. I can't say this without saying about my wife because me and my wife purpose this in our hearts is that the only thing that I want my life to be about is is others. You know, uh, the least of these. Today my wife uh, and another young lady went down to the homeless and my wife had about 50 hats and 50 uh, uh, pairs of gloves. Everything was brand new and all they were doing was giving them out to the homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, and just talking to them, praying for them, mm-hmm. things like that. And um, uh, I just kind of purpose in my heart that I can't go into a grocery store, I can't go to a gas station. I cannot meet a person that you can't run across me in some kind of way that I don't make you smile. Mm. Because the best way to get a person's attention is to compliment them on something or compliment them about something you just saw them do you know, for something else. And so we, what we do is we, um, uh, we have a third eye and a third ear to do certain things like that. And any time we go out, it's not about us, it's always, you know, about, about others. And I think that uh, if, I, if, I, if I just do, that's just how I want people uh, to remember me. I love it. Yeah. Tell the audience where they can find you. Okay. You can find me at uh, David E. Gooden, G O O D I N dot com, where you can purchase those books. Uh, or you can uh, find us at a Gooden Family Affair dot com. And you can see every, anything about me or my wife that you want to see. Okay. Love it. Thank you to our elder. David Gooding. And thank you. Uh, You guys can check out his books, Wisdom from the Father You May Have Never Had. Also, well, that didn't work. Hard Lessons Learned in Love and Marriage. Where can they pick these books up at? Um, DavidEGooden.com. Okay. There you go. You can get them. Yeah. David E. And watch the video, the 30 second video. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the video of me and my son? I did not. You did not. not. Okay. It's It's a 30 second video. Okay. I mean, 50 second video where my son was interviewing me uh, uh-huh. for the book. And this is a son that uh, remembered the day I left him when he was five and his brother was three oh. and moved out uh, and left them with their mom and moved directly in with another woman and started being with her and helping her with her and her family while they struggled. And uh, he remembered that. Now his name is David, but we call him Cage. And uh, his brother said that if you ever, when he was a teenager, if you ever want to make Cage mad, call him David. Because mm, he didn't want to so, be like his father. No, I used to call him for sometimes six months. He wouldn't even take my call. You think that would have been different if you would have come every now and again to visit? Um, you know what? I didn't even have the, well, you know, I did. Because, mm-hmm. you know, every two weeks is good. Yeah. But it's, uh, but there's, uh, when they were grown, I found out there were so many things that I missed out on, Jeez. you know, with that. Yeah. And so I had him interview me on the book and uh, where he's telling me some things about how I just wasn't there. But he tur- but he did tell me in that 60 second clip that you can see on davidegooden.com that I earned my way back. We'll, set, we'll put, a, we'll put a, yeah. a link to it. But it's, a, it's actually a 48 minute video. Okay that uh, over a million people have seen it so far. Wow. But it is, he speaks for children talking to parents, wow. which is what makes it, and then I have to take it 
Yeah. And people say, how can you sit there and take it? Because what he's saying is true. Mm-hmm. You know, all I can do is say, I'm sorry. I can't tell him you just don't understand what I was going through in my life, what I was going. That don't mean crap to a child, you know, but it was it was awesome. Well, thank you, David Gooden. Right. For coming and in today. Thank you, Miss Smitty. You are a <laughs> great Smitty host. Miss Smitty D. Yes, Smitty D. Named after my father. No, I'm teasing. Okay. Um, I like your dad. Now. Yeah, he's a he's he's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you guys. Cool. Not your cool. Okay. No, no. I'm sure cool. when he comes to town, you guys will have a good time. We will. But thank you again for coming in, guys. If you like this type of content, make sure that you like, share, comment, and also subscribe. And if you want to get in contact with us directly, you can reach out to us at info at smittyand.com. Again, that's info at smittyand.com. And until next time, guys, take care of one another.